yourself to be present, to be here. It is always appropriate to be here. Contemplate. If you ever happen to be someplace and you contemplate, I'm not here. Where are you? So in this moment, be here. Be here wherever here happens to be. In this day and time, we have gathered together to contemplate, to dialogue this that is called... Night shift again. 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 I'll be damn late. Now, where are my people? 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 I have no idea. <laughs> I have 
have no idea. I have no idea why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm talking about this. Uh, I saw something. They saw something. Shift again. Night 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 shift again. And you are tuned to listener sponsored radio, WBAI 99.5 FM, and this is Night Shift, and this is a very special episode of Night Shift. We're going to talk about all 21 and 22, depending on how you want to look at it, Marvel movies that have happened so far in anticipation of Avengers Endgame, which comes out actually on Thursday, but the three of us, I think, are going to be seeing it on tomorrow, mm -hmm. actually, in a few hours. So uh, first, I'm going to introduce uh, ladies first, Rachel Leishman. Welcome to WBAI. Hello. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about you. I was going to read everybody's intro, but I'm going to let you do your own intro because... Oh, no. Your co your co host here wants to do his own intro too. So. <laughs> um, so I'm a writer and a comedian in New York. Okay. I am also a very big nerd. Okay. Uh, I love the Marvel movies. I write about them enough to prove that I love the Marvel movies. But uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I'm a nerd. I feel like that co like covers a lot of bases when you just say you're a nerd. It does. It does. <laughs> And and so, but now, who do you write for? Where oh, people yeah, that's that? important. That would, that would um, <laughs> I write for the Mary Sue, and um, you can also find my stuff on Culturist, but the Mary Sue is where I mainly do my writing. Okay. Now, uh, sitting next to you is, is a man I've known for quite some time. I'm just going to call you Steve because you're slightly undercover here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Steve does a lot of things that we can't talk about, and he's involved with things we can't mention. But he's a big Marvel fan. So, Steve. <laughs> that makes me sound so mysterious. I yes, like that even better. And it's so weird to be on this side of the microphone. As, as you know, I've uh, done a lot, lot, a lot of interviews, and now it's kind of weird. So... Picking up on that thread, yeah, you know, I'm a news producer and a writer and a cosplayer and a prop guy and a unrepentant geek. So a unrepentant geek. Okay. Yeah. So All right. Well, we're, we're going to have our panel is going to be pretty, pretty. Uh, it's it's going to be not big, but it's going to be diverse. We're going to have people from, let's just say, different. Uh, all right. I've got two Italians here in the studio with me, but uh, we're going to have different, different ethnicities, different walks of life. I'm going to have Dave Campetti here. I'm going to have Ian Holt here. I'm going to have Chuck Creekmer here. Uh, I might even get Lloyd Goldfine. Each of them are people who individually have perspective on what we're going to talk about. And I, I just want to start this conversation a little bit just to say that it, it's sort of amazing what Marvel has done, okay? And they've set this template that I think 
not only has never been done, but, but I also have to talk about it in the context of the age we live in, where TV has changed. From, from my perspective, I remember when TV growing up, and you may not remember this, okay, looking at you, Rachel, when you, TV, uh, standalone episodes, everything was a standalone episode, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes there might be recurring characters. But what happened is in the beginning, uh, I think uh, there, there were a few things, you know, historically, I think what happened is nighttime soaps came. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea of continuing storylines came along and an arc that ended and then everybody wanted to see it and who shot JR. But then that moved into primetime television. Uh, and once cable began and you could do things like The Sopranos and The Sex and the City and and then, you know, shows like Lost and, and Battlestar Galactica. So everything now is binge worthy everything now has an arc everything has continuing story threads and that's what keeps you hooked so the idea 10 years ago to not just set up something that might have a cameo not just set up something that you know well these characters clearly exist in the same universe maybe we'll have a nod to them on the wall uh in previous you know superhero movies this was really you know a change and i also want to say uh and and either of you can speak on this i also want to say what's interesting is that for a long time prior to you know i won't even talk about x-men and you know that really and blade but prior to that there were a lot of graphic novels as comic books became graphic novels they're not just comic books uh that were adapted that people don't even realize were based on comics so i think Mar- what marvel's doing the whole idea of a con- continuity in a universe it's it's the future like everything now is a universe yeah, what's, I mean, what's your take on that? I mean, my my thing is going back to if we're going to talk about the original Iron Man, uh, the thing yes. that 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 we're going to begin in there. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> I mean, people uh, don't really think about it, but at the time, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was really the loose yes, cannon. He was. Um, he was almost uninsurable. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, he made less money than uh, Terrence Howard in that film. <laughs> That's exactly what wasn't I was going to say. The <laughs> movie before Iron Man wasn't just like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. That was at. That no, was that was after. after. Oh, that was after? That. The movie before for Iron Man was a movie called Two Guys and a Girl, that his friend uh, I forget his name James Toback maybe Toback, yeah. uh, was friends with him and got him in the film. Did it for like no money. And then singing Detective Mel Gibson and put up his bond for yes he did he put up his bond and uh, because he couldn't get him matured and right. Mel even had a cameo in the thing as, as himself which was hysterical <laughs> uh, but it was a musical and it showed him because at the time he was you know Downey even did Ally McBeal and was showing his musical range and everything like that and then you know kind of went off the rails again a bit and, and for him to come back for him to be the guy that he is I mean a lot of people forget because let's face it it's been 10 years it's been a long time it's been a lifetime in you know, in the movie world, in pop culture, and it's been that many movies that he's been on top. But, you know, there was, mm-hmm. man, that was, that was, it was a gutsy move to hire him, and it was a great move to hire him because I don't think you can ever do that character without him, honestly. No, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Now, I'm, I'm, we're going to start with Iron Man, of course, but what did you want to say, uh, Rachel? Did you want to say anything about the precursor, everything leading up to Iron Man? And- oh, yeah, I'll talk about Robert Downey Jr. all day. Um, <laughs> I have a running theory that everyone has a Robert Downey Jr. phase, and mine actually happened before Iron Man because my mom loved Ally McBeal. So, like, his version of River is the one I listened to on Christmas, and, like, The Futurist was the craziest thing to me, which is his album, if you don't know what that is. And, like... Well, that's why we'll talk about it. But there's a true Downey fan. Of it. Oh, I love Downey. But there's a quote in um, in in Civil War where uh, Hawkeye calls him the futurist, and it's like if you're a Downey fan, you're like that's great, but no one else got it. Um, but I Iron Man was interesting too as a choice because he wasn't that big of a superhero. Like absolute right. Cap and Spider Man are the ones that you normally would have gone to with uh, Marvel. Right. So to pick Iron Man, which my brother and I both were like, that doesn't make who who, like I get it, like I know him, but like why him? But and, it's perfect. And it was because Marvel had licensed out all yeah. the, <laughs> yeah, all the <laughs> so to, to pay the also rent. that had, you know they, yes, they, they had, had given away. So there were people, there were people who said it's it's a you know a B superhero. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's F- a, absolutely Feige's point superhero. was like. Iron Man's not a be superhero, but you know he had he had sort of a point in terms of like the, the pecking order of superheroes. All right. Well, we're going to bring in a couple of people here. Uh, we're going to see who's who's coming in now. Oh, I think we lost somebody, but I'm going to play something that should sound familiar to you, and then we'll uh, we'll move on.
No one's allowed to talk, is that it? You can't talk? No, you intimidate them. Good God, you're a woman. <laughs> is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? I humbly present the Jericho. Peace. Tony Stark. Now you work for me. What are you building, Stark? Your eyes are red. Your tears for your long lost boss? Tears of joy. I hate job hunting. Yeah, vacation's over. Welcome home, sir. Yeah, put up the scanner, will you? What happened over there? I have my eyes open. I want to protect the people. I put in harm's way. A man with a dozen of these can rule all of Asia. Yeah, I can fly. Let's see if this dog can hunt. So the upgrade is complete. Tell you what, throw a little hot rod red in there. Damn. Good luck keeping up. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. There's been speculation that I'm parading around as a superhero. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. All right. So what's funny is when you, when you when you see that trailer, and I, and I was watching these before I, I did it, is you you forgot that just how young Downey still really was ten years ago. So it's kind of fun. Now let me ask you. Uh, you you mentioned a really good point here, Rachel, and I think I have Dave Campetti here. Dave, are you here? Yep. All right, Dave Campetti, welcome. Dave, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, and then we're, we're going to talk a little bit about Iron Man. But introduce yourself. Uh, tell me who the heck you are. You're, you've been in comic books for 36 years. You're like yep. a veteran. You're, you're, you're the elder statesman here, and so we have to listen to everything you say, okay? Oh, God, help us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I've been in the comics biz and the related fields for 36 years, been uh, writing comics since the early 80s. I wrote Superman for Julie Schwartz back in the mid-80s. I was a comic book publisher. I did innovation publishing, which did uh, comics based on Anne Rice and Stephen King, and I did Lost in Space and Dark Shadows and Quantum Leap and Beauty and the Beast. And uh, around 93, I started uh, Glasshouse Graphics, the biggest comics art agency on the planet with close to uh, 200 artists that we uh, do tons of work for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, uh, Dynamite, IDW, and basically everybody else. So you know a little bit about comic books, is basically. A little saying. bit. Just and uh, bit. I, I want to say I am really happy to be here uh, with this group of unrepentant nerds. <laughs> unrepentant nerds. That's, that's going <laughs> to yes, be the, yes. that should be the and, name and, of the podcast, okay? Yes, yes. And she, and she, was, she was speaking about River. That's the song that starts Christmas. <laughs> it is. See, you two clearly are cut from the same <laughs> genetic cloth. Hey, hey, you, okay. No, no, you, 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 you got to understand. When we hear that song playing, uh, of course, we're the ones who start playing it the day after Thanksgiving. When he says but, we, he means his tribe. Great, I'm part of it. <laughs> my wife and I actually. <laughs> exactly. uh, <laughs> Me, um, my people. No, uh, we, we listen to that song and we say, okay, that's. Tony Stark with a glass of whiskey sitting at, at, at a piano doing that, uh, typing uh, onto the keyboard or uh, the uh, p piano, uh, singing that song in Avengers Mansion. Well, there it is. This is this is pre uh, Demon in a Bottle. Obviously, he's 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 okay. <laughs> he's okay. All right. So, uh, and you have to be a real nerd to know what I'm talking about there. So, uh, who else did I bring in? Chuck, is that you, Chuck? 
Yes, sir. Chuck Creekmer. All right, so Chuck, you're here now. You're representing a different perspective than the elder statesman, the the young nerd, and then well, I, you know, we'll just call him the Italian nerd. Uh, so, um, Chuck, who are you, Chuck Creekmer, and and why and how are you a nerd? Well, I'm the uh, co-founder of AllHipHop.com, but uh, little do people know I lived a dual life in my youth where I was also a uh, comic nerd and, you know, a lover of comic books and fantasy as well, all types of fantasy. So uh, in, in school, in high school particularly, that was a well-guarded secret. Well, you know, can I just say something, and I'm glad you brought that up, because I do think being a nerd, if you're a nerd who can pass, you know what I'm saying, for normal, that's like having a secret identity. But, you know, I, I definitely grew up at a time where being a nerd was, you know, not, you know, you were a nerd, okay? It was not... The idea that we live in a world not only where superhero movies are the most money-making things of all time, but the most popular show on TV is about a bunch of nerds who live together. Uh, who, right. Who'd have thought? You know, I the, hate that show so much. <laughs> I've never seen yeah. it. I hate I've never that seen it. Took, we took the word back. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, what, right. We lived long enough to prove we were right all along. <laughs> there it is. There it is. We lived true, long very enough. True. There it is. I, I'm going to use that quote from now on, Dave. But I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, old, you know, old enough my voice we lived long enough to then and say it like that hey, i know how old you are you don't need to olden up your voice. hey hey <laughs> hey watch your mouth there pal you're gonna find yourself floating back home all right anyway so um uh so you were all here so i'm gonna say i'm gonna start with iron man to say that i definitely feel that iron man was a b character he was definitely not somebody that i you know he was not my favorite character i mean i know who he was but I, I was not a fan necessarily. And I will say this because, you know, Fantastic Four is a great example. It's not, we're not going to really talk about it. But, you know, uh, Rachel mentioned Spider-Man, Captain America. I mean, as a comic book, those are, those are great. But they're, they're kind of silly. He, he's wearing tights, <laughs> bright red tights, and it, it's kind of silly. You know, I mean, they obviously have, you know, fixed that and made the costume cooler, but Captain America, come on, who's going to run around with a big red, white, and blue outfit and be taken seriously? It's like, that's why they had to do Captain Marvel as a comedy. So I, I think what's interesting is that Iron Man translates to film better than probably almost any of the Marvel characters and, and was kind of a stroke of genius. And, and for, you know, just fortuitousness, because they didn't have license for everything, anything else, that that happened. That's just my take on it. So I, I was blown away. Uh, I like John Favreau as, a, as an actor. I liked him as a director. I th he was surprising us at that point. He had done Z Zathruska. Zathura, yeah. Zathura, and which Elf, was, too. and he did Elf, which was oh, a I huge hit. Did Elf. Exactly. <laughs> Elf is what got him. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and so he, he was proving himself to be like a force to be reckoned with as a filmmaker, because he was really an actor who could direct. And he and Vince, what's it, Vince Vaughn, mm -hmm. didn't he direct? That first Vince Vaughn vehicle? He wrote Swingers. He uh, wrote yeah. Swingers. Doug Lyman. Doug Lyman directed, directed right. Yeah. So they, they were part of that Doug but yeah. Lyman. But Favreau Vince Vaughn. goes back, for, and not to interrupt, but Favreau goes back to he was, you know, Froggy in the Daredevil movie. Yes, with, he was. With, uh, ben Affleck. Yes, so, he was. Like, I mean, he goes, and, and I think he even had a bit in one of the Batman. He was the Froggy. Batman yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Bit. That's right. I forget he was Froggy. Yeah. All right, um, well, we don't talk about Daredevil. Yeah, I know. All right. So, uh, or that, Affleck. So my, my, my take on it when I first saw it was just like, wow. I, I was just blown away by how good it was, and largely because of the casting of Downey, because I think oh, yeah. Downey made that film because it made because Favreau is rock and roll, Downey's rock and roll. It made Iron Man rock and roll, and rock and roll in that meaning of like edgy, like we're gonna say the wrong thing and we're gonna be off color. And yeah. I'm a loose cannon. Yeah, I mean, and the whole thing, they, they really had trouble getting a screenwriter for it, too, because, again, it was a B character and whatever, and, and they and a lot of that script came together last minute, and a lot, I talked to Bridges about it, and... and I was and, there when you talked to Bridges. Yeah, I was there. I, I, I was at that up, junket. Those were my to, first I went junkets. To, yeah, I had him at GMA recently, and I had him say the box of scraps line, because that's my favorite line as a prop guy. Um, but, he, but, you know, he was saying he had to just, he was all ready to go, and the script kept changing and kept changing and then he, he said you know and he had to get kind of dude on it he told me and had to go you know what just 
take it back like it's an art house movie and just have fun. Like these guys are having fun uh, and right. Fabra's having okay. fun. Okay, yeah. all right. So Rachel, first time you <laughs> I saw wish it, they could see give, my give me a little right con- now about all right. the Jeff Bridges content. <laughs> he looks like my dad, so I love Jeff Bridges because okay. I feel like he's my dad. So I just lost my mind over that. <laughs> Sorry. What was your question? <laughs> right, my, my question was just giving us a little context. You know, you're a nerd, and you said you had an older brother who was yeah. a nerd who helped turn you into comic books. But the first time you saw Iron Man, what like what was it for you? What did you think? So, um, I you guys are talking about loose cannon downy, and I think it's funny because I just I'm also a Saturday Night Live nerd. So me and my friend will talk about Downey's season on Saturday Night oh, Live yeah. a lot because it's terrible. Did he have a whole season? Oh, he did one season. Yeah, he did, did one he really? season. And they they scrapped that entire cast. Yeah. Um, they almost, they almost, the show almost got canceled yeah. that season. Wow. That's and so they just literally took all of them out. So for me, I was like, I think this is very funny because I come from a family who we all, like, I love less than zero. Like, we all knew Downey. So they were like, he's Tony Stark. And my older brother was like, that makes sense. And, like... <laughs> And in, in a way that, like, now we all say that makes sense, but when it came out, we were like, no, 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 this, like, perfectly checks out as, like, a centric billionaire that you don't trust. Yeah, and, uh, he, and he had that great line about, you know, uh, my large uh, large list of character defects, most of them public. You know, yeah. Yeah. it was, like, literally just confessional to the cast. Yes, it was. Yes, yeah. it was. Um, all right. I love it, though. Well, you know, it, it was not a big stretch to cast a super talented, rich substance abuser <laughs> as a super talented, rich <laughs> substance <laughs> No, I was but but, kind of but Downey is fantastic no matter what he does. So that that, that was perfect casting. And uh, and for you, Dave, now as 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 and I don't want to get to you, Chuck. For for you, Dave, now you grew up reading these books as they were coming out, probably, yep, uh, which yep. has got to be really exciting because Marvel Comics. You know, I remember I've read articles about Marvel Comics back in the day and what a revelation it was because it shook up the industry. And the big deal was superheroes with problems. That was the whole concept behind Marvel, oh, yeah. and and an interconnected universe. You know, where it wasn't just you know, where they could come together and do stuff. So what was it for you, you know, by the time you'd been through all the ups and downs of comic movies, when you saw Iron Man, what was your thoughts going in and what was your thoughts well, coming let, out? Let's, let's put it this way. You know, every Marvel movie up to that point seemed to be a half effort. You know, you, you think about all the movies before Marvel Studios got to do their own thing, and the X-Men movies were like a half effort. They didn't want to put them in the actual costume. You were, you know, the Punisher movies weren't there. Ghost Rider, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, movie after movie, as far back as the, you know, terrible Reb Brown Captain America and, and uh, you know, the terrible Thor guest starring on the Hulk, that's what we got b- back then. So, so you know, one, once you get to Marvel Studios doing Iron Man with full control over everything, and trying to do everything right and treating the characters with respect rather than Hollywood's idea of, oh, we have to fix this because it's just a comic book. That was the revelation. It's like, okay, we know how to do our characters and make them work. And Marvel was right. And, you know, I look at that Iron Man movie and I say, it's about 95% perfect for me. Wow, 95%. All right. Uh, Chuck, what, what, what's your take wow. on Iron Man? Because I don't think Iron Man was one of your favorites. Well, Iron Man, you know, I was cool with Iron Man growing up, but uh, obviously he wasn't a fan favorite. You know, he was somebody that we, uh, you know, on the periphery, if you will. Um, but I did think that the, um, you know, I think they nailed it in the uh, movies. I really do. And I think that... Um, you know, of all the roles that Robert Downey Jr. has played, this one is the one that was tailor made, tailor made for him. This is the mo- you know, the role he'll be remembered for the rest of his life. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and again, you know, it, you know, we. I, I think I don't know. I I'm not sure. You know, my young my young brain probably processed alcoholism a little differently, but um, I, I think they. I don't think they played that up as much. You know, obviously. For, for it to fit younger audiences, but uh, 
you know, that was a big deal. A demon in the bottle. I, I remember that cover. You know? Yeah, I remember the cover too. Have you ever seen that cover, yeah. Rachel? No. It's a classic cover. Have you seen it? <laughs> yes, yes classic okay. Cover. See, all of us you old folks <laughs> have seen that issue. Yes, <laughs> but but it's it's a classic because at the time, Rachel, you know, first of all, comics had a code that was created uh, as a result of a number of other things that went on in this country. And in the 70s, they were pushing things into the 80s. And they were doing, every now and then, they do a series of comics that were not approved by the comics code. And that was like a big deal. So and if they dealt with drugs or alcoholism, that was not approved because children shouldn't know these things exist. So I, that was really kind of Iron Man's biggest moment in the comics, I think. was the, uh, Would you say that's correct there, Dave Campetti? Yes, I do. All right. It is. All right. So now we're going to move on. And I'm Chuck, I'm going to let you lead here because, okay, I asked everybody here, okay, to, uh, and, and we're going to be bringing in another friend of mine very soon, Ian Holt. But I asked everybody here to um, give me their five favorites and their two worst uh, Marvel films. And, and, you know, overall, certain films, everybody was their favorite. Uh, and certain films, most people, that was their, their least, and, and we'll get to that list. But only one person, and that's Chuck Creekmer, okay, uh, picked a film that was on almost everybody's worst list. And <laughs> so I wanted to know why you liked it. And that's The Incredible Hulk. And I'm just going to play that trailer for you before we uh, move on. Okay. That man's whole body is property of the U.S. Army. You have to get as far away from me as you can. Go! There are aspects of my personality that I can't control. Target is in the overpass. And when I lose control, it's very dangerous to be around me. Experiments has gone here, why? There's only one thing that can fight that. It's in me. Okay. Okay, even that line, one of your bioforce it sounds okay. It sounds so cheesy. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely thought it was an improvement over the Ang Lee film. And I want to set this up just for those who don't know. Uh, you're tuned to listen to Sponsored Radio WBAI. This is Night Shift. I'm Mike Sargent. I'm here with Steve, the mysterious Steve. I'm here with Rachel Leishman. I'm here with Chuck Creekmer and Dave Campetti. We're going to have a couple of the people joining us soon. But we're talking about all. 21 Marvel movies leading up to Endgame that comes out this week and we're and we're doing them in order and the the film that Marvel after the success of Iron Man decided was the best choice because they still had the rights and they hadn't gotten it right was The Incredible Hulk which we just heard the trailer for and and it was kind of I don't think it was universally panned as as the original Ang Lee was because Ang Lee was just the, the term wrong headed comes to mind, but uh, I thought that this was an improvement. I thought that it could have, you know, it, 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 I was like, all right, they they it, they, they, they fixed it somewhat. I, I'm I'd, I'd see another one, uh, but a lot of people as the bar kept getting raised, I think people have kind of maybe almost kind of trashed it. Maybe they shouldn't. Uh, well, but wait, Chuck, wait, wait. you said it's you talk to me. Well, yeah, what, what, I think what, what, 
You go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. He can't even help himself. He can't even help himself. Dave, let, let Chuck go. I say this to all of you. It was a great film. Mm. Great film. Talk to me. I Tell me why it was great. I Tell me why you loved it. it. I can watch it any time of the day or night. Uh, I thought I thought Edward Norton was the best David Banner. Uh, Bruce Banner. Sorry, David Banner. Uh, the best Bruce Banner since uh, Bill Bixby. Mm. Uh, I think I think he encompassed the uh, classic banner that we we've come to know and love. Um, no disrespect to Mark Ruffalo, who's you know he's decent, he's solid, good guy. Um, and I also think that the Hulk that we see uh, represents the Hulk that we that we that, that the monster. You know, let's let's be honest, the Hulk is a monster, and now they turned him into some sort of a comedic. You know, sidekick of some sort. You know what I mean. And uh, mm. judging by the toys that are out there now, I, who knows what he's going to be in the uh, end game, which I, I haven't seen yet. Um, but I thought it was a good movie, and I thought the Abomination was well done as well. Um, I like Tim Roth in there as the uh, Abomination, and uh, even his uh, persona prior to being the monster. I thought it was good. I thought it was a classic, uh, simple. Bad versus, uh, you know, bad versus badder type of movie, and I, I enjoyed it. And, uh, and I, I have to say, you know, the Hulk is my favorite favorite of all time. So if you ask my mom who my favorite superhero is, uh, uh, so you're Hulk. slightly biased. You 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 loved Hulk anyway, and they kind of got it right. A little biased, a little biased, you know. But I, I do I do feel like it was a it was a good movie, and um, I put it at the top because I wanted it to be clear where I stood on it. All right, all right. All right, we're clear. Uh, now, I, I have to let you go, Dave, because you, you were about to explode. Uh, what, <laughs> what, what? No, 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 uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm agreeing with everything he just said. Uh, the, the, the problem that I have is you went into the movie, came out of it with, okay, it's a second movie in a row where the, the hero fights a bigger, badder version of him, himself. Marvel used to be known as the House of Ideas. Marvel movies became the house of idea. Half their movies are about fighting a bigger, badder version of yourself. And and I get a little sick of that. But when we saw it in in The Hulk, uh, I think looking back on it, the best I can say about it is it didn't suck. You know, it, it it, it, it was so far better than the Ang Lee's, but it should have been better than... It didn't suck. But well, would that have everything. been would that have been your quote if they asked you to quote? It didn't suck, Dave Campaign. <laughs> but pretty, pretty much, I, I mean, it, uh, everything he talked about w- w- was right. It was a good casting for for, for Banner. It, it was a uh, a workable version of, of of the Hulk. Everything worked, but in comparison with the movies that came after that were considerably better. It now pales by comparison. I, I think. Yeah, I think. I think personally, I think that the, the Marvel movies are, are sort of an embarrassment of riches. Like there's so many that are so good that it's it's sort of like picking your favorite kid kind of thing. You know, like so I was asked to pick a, I was asked to pick the ones I, I liked least, and 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 Hulk wound up on there. But but you all make good points. No no no. You 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 only you picked uh, two different ones, which I'm not going to reveal yet. Yeah, um, I mean, but my but, but my I thing know is, it wasn't. Up there for you. I know the uh, you know the Tim Roth. I love Tim Roth. Uh, one, one of my favorite actors. One of my favorite dudes uh, in in real life. Uh, oh, I yes, you like, did put it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I like I liked uh, Ed Norton. Thunderbolt Ross is great. They brought him back for uh, into the MCU. Uh, I will have to say though, I, I I called Foggy Froggy, and that was my bad. I have been up since four in the morning. Okay, okay. so that <laughs> Rachel, Rachel pointed that out for me, and I'm I didn't want to well actually you. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, yeah, I just, I just, I deserved it. But again, I'll, I will take. All right, now, Rachel, what, what are your thoughts? Well, actually, you didn't see. That's the only but one you didn't see. I didn't watch it because I was like, whatever. Because I, I'm like a very visual human, so I didn't want to watch Ed Norton because I that movie, like, I didn't see it when it came out, and then I watched where like I had gone past it so far that Mark Ruffalo was the Hulk, and if I went back, my brain would be like, this doesn't connect. I understand. So I just didn't. I understand. But so, yes. that movie started the big chill reunion that the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe has become. 
because mm. it's John Hurt, Jeff Goldblum, and Glenn Close all in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I give props to the Incredible Hulk the because I love the big chill. Within the Marvel Universe. Well, that, I'm glad that comes from the youngest person here. That's the BCU, the big chill all universe. All right, so moving <laughs> on, moving on. I got a question for the group. What's the uh, question? Um, would, Ed Nor- uh, would, would Edward Norton have done as good a job as Mark Ruffalo handling the comedic elements. No. You know, honestly, I don't uh, I, I think that I think I think Norton can be funny. Um, I think that the, the issue was more of a personality thing with him. They they didn't uh, they kind of felt he wasn't a team player and and he, he got kind of Terrence Howarded in, uh, that, in that. That's way. that's, a, that's an answer Terrence to a different Howarded. question. <laughs> okay, well I didn't know that that's a Marvel Universe phrase. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of Terrence Howarded, uh, well we're coming up on on Iron Man two, and Iron Man two was a smart move because they got it right the first one, and they said okay, you know Hulk didn't didn't tank. Okay, let, let's keep that in mind, you know, uh, as, as uh, Steve said, you know, it is sort of a, you know, what was the phrase you used? Embarrassment of riches. Embarrassment of riches, yes. Uh, that's uh, Steve, uh, the Italian critic. Uh, so, <laughs> embarrassment of only, riches, only it is. Half. It is in that it, it's, it was a movie, I, I think, that, that people at this point can dismiss because it didn't blow you away like so many of them have. Now... Iron Man 2, on the other hand, to some people was a misfire. I think to many people it was a misfire. But to some people l- liked it. Uh, uh, and I really feel like I should have Ian here. We're probably going to backtrack <laughs> it because I know Ian would have a lot to say on Iron Man 2. But let's just listen to the trailer for Iron Man 2 where they decided at this point now. And this is the other thing that was starting to happen with the superhero movies. It's like, hey, why don't we get... Okay, we got Downey. Why don't we get another actor who almost destroyed his career on drugs? Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. They will be blood in the water. And the sharks will come. All I have to do is sit here and watch as the world will consume you. <laughs> Our priority is to get the Iron Man weapon turned over to the United States of America. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. Contrary to popular belief, I know exactly what I'm doing. What? What I saw you do to Tony Stark on that track? Wow. You need my resources. I want to make Iron Man look like an antique. This whole lone gunslinger act unnecessary. You don't have to do this alone. I hope you're ready. Come on! Mr. Stark displays textbook narcissism. Agreed? Okay, all right. Well, I have to say, uh, the trailer looked good. I was pumped when I saw the trailer. Uh, what, uh, all right, I'm going to see. I'm going to start with Rachel. Because, Rachel, all right, talk to me, Rachel. Is Robert Downey Jr. It's a sequel to Iron Man. What, what, what did you think when you saw it? What are your, what are your I thoughts? I like this movie. I mean, it also gave me Natasha Romanoff. And it, like, Sam Rockwell. Like, we were talking when the trailer was going, that's like, Sam Rockwell's in it. You mentioned Mickey Rourke. Um, like, there's so many Leslie Bibb, so it's like that couple is in it, which I still don't understand. There's just so many things. I think this movie is so kind of out there that you're like, I don't even know what I watched, but it's great. And it also has that really cool hallway fight at the end with Natasha, where she like takes out like all those guys. Maybe I just like yeah. it because Natasha, but like I really like Iron Man too. Yeah. All right, the, okay. The, the Monaco scene I think is is yeah. stand out. The movie gets a lot of a lot of flack for people, but I think the Monaco scene, the the briefcase suit, the Mark V. 
is one of the greatest scenes of all time in any Marvel movie, and I will go to the mat for that. You'll go to the mat. You just just like uh, Chuck would stand up for Iron Man, you would go to the mat yes. for this for Iron Man too. All right, so I want to go to you, Chuck and Dave. But Dave, I, that was on your worst list. So talk to me. Uh, clearly, you and Rachel now have some genetic differences. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, it, it, you know, when I got to the, the bit of Tony Stark being drunk and, and in the Iron Man suit and all that, it's like, okay, this, they're playing this for humor that's not working, and everybody involved is better than this. And uh, I just came away from the movie uh, with the feeling that they kind of gave up. It was like they didn't know what to do. They had a release date, and they did what they could instead of making a movie as good as the first one. Mm. And, mm, that's uh, an indictment, David. Uh, <laughs> we so, interpreted it that very differently. Yes. I didn't take that as comedy at all. Mm. I'm also very, I, I studied acting, so when I watch characters, I get very in their heads and I analyze things about them that people don't. So for that, I like, that was my Tony Stark defense mechanism kind of argument was like, he was acting out and getting drunk in the suit and not caring. He has but it wasn't issues. him being funny. Yeah, it was him like processing all these issues that he just doesn't talk about to anybody. And mm. in his defense, he was dying of palladium yeah. poisoning. So, you know. mm. yeah, <laughs> that's that right, too. palladium poisoning. Let's not forget. I went to some conscious that had me. All right, so now, um, Chuck, what were your thoughts on Iron Man 2? I liked it, man. I, I can't lie. I it and I thought it was I thought it was a great move. I mean, okay, great is probably a strong word, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. I really liked um, you know, I was not a big fan of Terrence Howard as um Brody. I just felt like you know, he uses too much lotion on his hands he doesn't give a firm yeah. print when he takes the hand. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get mil- I didn't get mil- too, I didn't get military guy. Yeah. <laughs> the, there's actually a great line. The first line when we see uh, uh, when we see Don Cheadle as Rhodey, uh, the first line that Tony says is, "I didn't expect to see you here," and it's like a great <laughs> double joke because it's a different exactly. dude. Isn't Iron Man two where he starts in the um, courtroom? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, there's that scene in there. Yep. All right. See, well, see, I see a lot of people. Iron Man kind of got uh, again. I think it's one of those movies. Now looking back, people are like, ah, they dismiss it. But at the time, Iron Man Two was fun. It was. It was not as good as the first one, but it was fun. I don't think it was. I mean, Dave put it in one of the worst. So uh, Dave thought it was just you know wrong headed. So you know clearly we're in the minority here, uh, or Dave's in the minority here. Uh, so other people liked it. Somebody else is calling. I don't know if this is Ian. Let me okay. see who Gary this is. Shandler, Hello, you on the air. Hello. 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 Yeah, no, that's not Ian. Okay, <laughs> so um, we're going to you know when people call and I haven't given another number. Those are not listeners. Those are callers. And there's definitely a difference. So uh, we're now going to go to the next movie in in the the now. Do, do you all know the list? I mean, Thor. Uh, Is it Thor? Uh, no, yeah. no, it's not Thor. No, it's not Thor, babe. Come on, come on. What is it? What is it? You should know. No, no, it is Thor. I'm kidding. I was like, okay. yeah, I was like it it's Branagh's Thor. Thor. Yeah, it is Branagh's Thor. All right, but I wanted to see if you would doubt yourself. <laughs> I was like, no, there's no way. Okay. <laughs> neighborhood i got beat up in that alley you just don't know when to give up i could do this all day do you have something against running away if you start running they'll never let you stop are you really gonna do this now there are men laying down their lives i got no right to do any less than them i can offer you a chance our goal is to create a new breed of super soldiers he brought a 90-pound asthmatic. Sorry about that. You're right. I am playing Cap 1. How, 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 how did that happen? Okay, hold on. Oh, you know what? I went ahead. Uh, forgive me. I am, you know, this is, this is, it took me, it took me a minute to realize that it was Cap 1. Yeah, I heard Soldier and was like, oh. Uh. <laughs> So we found it. Jane, I think you want to see this. You all right? You death. 
threaten me. Thor was so puny. A <laughs> what? He was freaking me out. Where did he come from? Name? He said it was Thor. You know, for a crazy homeless person, he's pretty cut. How'd you get inside that cloud? Also, how could you eat an entire box of Pop-Tarts and still be this hungry? This drink, I like it. Another! This is going on Facebook, smile. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same. But who are you, really? You'll see soon enough. God, I hope you're not crazy. <laughs> You swear to guard the lives of the innocent and preserve the peace. I swear. I will destroy their kind. You can't kill an entire race and die with them. These people are innocent. I have no plans to die today. that explosion is where we started so now that is thor now i have to say now coming into thor i, I thought this this was the beginning of a couple of things that i thought they were doing right i think one that they allowed each uh and again they really were imitating what the comics had done this is i mean the genius of this is that they didn't really come up with anything new they just did what they were doing in the comics just in the movies but what they did was they adapted kevin feige clearly understands cinema and cinema has certain conventions that you accept. And this was a fish out of water story. And I thought it was very smart to do it that way. And I thought it completely worked. I, I think that uh, it didn't make anybody's top five list, but I don't think it didn't make anybody's bottom list. So I think I think Thor was a solid entry in into uh, the Marvel Universe. And I think it set up a lot of really fun things. I'm kind of disappointed that Natalie Portman didn't want to do any more. I don't think comic book movies had really kind of come into their own yet. So it was not, she did it, but, you know, she was only trying to do prestige. Well, she did too. She did, she did too. She was in the second one She was one in the second one too. But I'm just saying, she, she was, you know, from what I understood, she didn't really want to do it. No. That's, that's what I heard. So, uh, I'll start with you, Rachel, and then we're going to bring in our new, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll introduce our new uh, co-host to, to the panel here. Ian Holt, are you there? I am here. Ian, just so people know who you are, who the hell are you, Ian? Well, I'm, uh, I'm the partner at Old House Productions, a uh, film production company. I wrote the sequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula with Dacre Stoker, Bram's great-grandnephew. It's the official sequel. And I, I make horror films. Dr. Chopper to episode 50. I got my new one, Death Metal, coming out later this year. And then Unhinged is going into production in a few months with Mickey Rourke. And just so you know, I'm the guy at the 2010 Scream Awards who gave Mickey, with Casa Spandalor, our buddy, the award for best villain for Iron Man 2. Was that you? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ian, uh, we're going to jump in. I'm going to have Rachel, and then I'll jump to you, Ian, because you're new to the to the group here. We're going to talk about Thor and and what we thought of Thor. Uh, start with you, uh, Rachel. Um, well, when we were listening to that, I remembered. So my running theory is that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, when they make these movies, they know people who are going to go see them multiple times are people who are attracted to men. Um, and in Iron Man, I forgot to talk about Oh, yeah. So. But my favorite scene in Iron Man, the first one, which is really hot, is when he's building his suit and he's in the tank top and he's, like, hammering to the beat. Mm -hmm. And, like, so we were talking about this and I was like, yeah, well, look at Chris Hemsworth. Like, you're not going to, yeah, he's supposed to be, like, ripped and a god, but he's shirtless walking around in, like, jeans three times throughout all of his movies. So I'm like, who's that for? If it's not for, for me. the girlfriends of the nerds. No, no it's no. me. <laughs> But um, I I like this Thor because I like Branagh a lot. So I saw what he was doing with this, and I liked it because it was 
very much in Thor's kind of realm, and it gave us sad Loki. Um, sad Loki. Sad Loki. But I, I like Thor a lot. I watched it a lot when it first came out and then haven't really gone back. But out of all of them, I was like, I think it's a very good first movie. I think Ragnarok blew all of them out of the water. But I, the, that first Thor was a good first Thor movie. I agree, and it's it's, and I'm, I'm mentioning this one thing, and then uh, I, w- I want to hear what Ian has to say about Thor. But I, I think it was smart to get brought up because uh, what the smart thing they were really doing is not only the convention, they were letting each one of them have their own flavor, you know, uh, and pick somebody who does something. Even taking Thor where they've gone now that they know that you know the comedy is really part of, a big part of what made Thor work. You look, you listen to that trailer; it's just lots of jokes and one-liners and i think that was the other smart thing marvel did is like you can't take it too seriously we can't all be you know christopher nolan dark knight is only one dark character in dc universe so uh ian what were your thoughts on thor did you like thor i loved it i i thought kenneth brana his choice as director for it writer was brilliant because he brought he, he is so in, in in Shakespeare's mind, that was doing all those Shakespeare films, that he brought that grander element to it of this greater, you know, almost tragic tragedy to it, you know, um, and uh, to use the big language and the big spectacle of of Thor in his own realm, and then to come here allowed him to be funny. And put him in the clothes or the, just the jeans and all of that, the fish out of water, made him relatable. And I think that was the big fear you know, that they even had as they were plotting Captain America. How do you make this great American character when we're in you know, Iraq you know, and the world hates us, half the world hates us for doing this? How do we make that character relatable? So Thor was the same thing, his big gestures, his big grandeur of the character. How do you bring that into the movie and make him relatable? And having him be so big and people laughing at him and like he's a joke made him kind of likable because you had Thor being the underdog. His powers were taken away, everything else, and yet you had this, you know, this great Shakespearean actor, Anthony Hopkins, there as, as the all father, you know, and it, 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 it somehow you could see Thor in, in, you know, in Hamlet that he did and Henry V. And all these movies, he is all there, and I thought it was brilliant to, you know, to go back to that great literature. And it, I think it gave a weight to Thor that I don't know if it could have been done any other way. I, and, I concur. You know, I concur. Proof of that, my production partner, Michael Alden, was the head of production at Canon when Menachem Golan bought all the, all the uh, Marvel characters and did those really cheap, horrible, mm. wool-suited, you know... Marvel movies that never got released, you know, and, and part of it was all done for stupidity and fun because they had no idea how to present these ca- the grandeur of these characters in a realistic way. Uh, I agree. Steve, what were your thoughts yeah, on I mean, Thor? If I, you know, I, I, I love the, the, the world building and the, and the cast building of it. My only gripe with Thor is, um, it, well, I, you know, I was never like super into the character to begin with. And matter of fact, this was the only one that I didn't see in the theater when it came out i saw it on dvd the morning i saw avengers so like i was kind of like required reading I just right, right, right. It. but i if i had any gripe it's it's that i feel that the budget was you know that that last act in the in the, the new mexico town like the budget was was kind of cheap and i think it was i think they had to do it because it all it had to do was make its money back to keep the to keep the ball rolling like it didn't have to be a super huge hit you know because they didn't keep the budget low and just keep it going to the next one, keep going to cap, you know. And I think that's what it was. And it was it was a good movie. It made its money. It did its thing. But I think it feels a little cheap in retrospect. Mm. But I think that the the performances are great. The cast is great. Um, and you know, Bron is great. And Bron came back for Ragnarok for a voiceover role, so he's yeah, still he in did. the family. All right. Yeah. So what about you, Chuck? What were your thoughts on Thor? You know, uh, I like Thor. I thought it. I you know, I, I wasn't into Thor in the comics at all. So I had a pretty you know, I just didn't have that deep appreciation for it, but I I, I thought it uh, fit well into the uh, you know the MCU, um, and I thought it you know established. Uh, I mean, I thought it was perfectly cast. You know, I don't I have no complaints uh, whatsoever. I just it just wasn't my guy growing up. Uh, 
But I will tell you this. I, I got to meet Walt Simonson, uh, the artist who drew Thor, um, just this year, last year, last year in Baltimore. So that was that was a big, big pleasure. Well, that's a perfect segue yeah. to Dave Campetti. Dave, what were your thoughts on Thor? You know, I, I think most of them all have already been stated. Um, it was great ha- having uh, the director that we did, because considering this was Stanley and Jack Kirby's most Shakespearean character, having a Shakespearean director made perfect sense. Uh, I also agreed that uh, by the time they got 75% of the way into the movie, they seemed to have run out of money. <laughs> so, the, so their big battle with the... the with uh, the destroyer robot happens in a tiny little town that reminded me of the crap scenes in Superman Two, yes. where uh, <laughs> where uh, uh, where the the three Kryptonian villains end up in a small Texas town to, to show off their skills because I guess they didn't have money to do something bigger. <laughs> Thor really reminded you know, me of that. They spend all their money on the traveling to the you know to get to Earth, so. You know. Well, it was really, it was really, they were trying to go, because of what happened with the Hulk, it was successful, but it wasn't as successful as the others. So they were trying to get past Thor and Captain America to get to the Avengers, which they knew was going to be the big one. Well, it was all leading to the Avengers, which was the, right. big, so was they, the real big gamble, really. They just wanted to make, make sure they made their money back. So, all right, so. I, there, was a, there was a limit on this one. Well, let's let's since we're talking about Captain America, let's go to Captain America. And I have to say, though I enjoy Captain America, it's probably one of my least favorites. Though I know a lot of really? people love it. Yes, I, I know why. I know this neighborhood. I got beat up in that alley. You just don't know when to give up. I could do this all day. Do you have something against running away? If you start running, they'll never let you stop. You really gonna do this now? There are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. I can offer you a chance. Our goal is to create a new breed of super soldier. When you brought a 90-pound asthmatic onto my army base, I let it slide. I am looking for qualities beyond the physical. You win wars with guts. Grenade! Everybody down! Is this a test? He's still skinny. Whatever happens, stay who you are. Not just a soldier. But a good man. Is it too late to go to the bathroom? <laughs> you actually did it. Who the hell are you? The first of many. Hydra is the Nazi deep science division, led by Johann Schmidt. He thinks he's a god, and he's willing to blow up half the world to prove it. You're not even close to this technology. I asked for an army, and all I got was you. Congratulations. You just got promoted. Mr. Stark? I had some ideas about the uniform. You're gonna get so many girls. Captain, we are much alike. I don't know if I can do this. You won't be alone. What made to you so special? Nothing. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. Nobody's perfect. Now, you put this on your list, Rachel, is one of your favorites. Mm-hmm. So tell me, is it just because of the eye candy, or, or do you well, really partly. think it's that good a movie? No, um, I love World War II. And that's like my gripe with Wonder Woman. While I I get why they did World War I, she is a World War II hero, just like Cap is. And um, so I loved this movie just because it's like very World War II. It has my favorite Bucky Barnes in it, because 1940s Bucky Barnes is my favorite. I like Sad Winter Soldier, but 1940s is so cool. And um, it, like, gives agency to Steve Rogers in a way that, like, we'll talk about it, but why I hate Age of Ultron so much is it because it diminishes his character just to being, like, this old joke. 
And that's mm. not Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers is this good boy from Brooklyn who, like, all he wanted to do was be the best he can be, and he was tiny, and he couldn't do it. So then he's the reason the super soldier serum worked because he was just a genuinely good human. And I think this movie does a really good job of showing that side of Steve Rogers, which is why I like it so much. And I love uh, Peggy Carter. And, like, I just like the whole – I so love You, you I like love the whole it. vibe. It just I all works it. for you. Yeah. It's an interesting point. You, you mentioned about um, uh, the lack of agency for the Steve Rogers character. I want to come back to that mm-hmm. when we get further into yeah. the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Uh, so we're going to run, start running through some of these because we, we've taken a little bit of time. But, Ian, since it's also on your list uh, as one of your favorites, I want to hear from you next. Why did you love this movie? Well, first off, I'm from Brooklyn. So I got the character <laughs> right away. And you used to be skinny. Yeah, you know, and my 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 dad, you know, enlisted at 18, you know, um, didn't even wait for the draft to go into World War II in the Navy. Um, he was training for the invasion of Japan. So, I mean, it, it, it had a lot of elements to it that meant something to me personally of this guy who wanted to fight for his country, you know. And I thought Chris Evans was amazing in the part. And the special effects of being the skinny little kid and Alex, you know, felt for Peggy and that whole relationship and Haley Atwell. I mean, the acting in this movie from Hugo Weaving to Stanley Tucci, that one scene where he explains why Steve Rogers, or he explains to him the night before he takes the formula, is so beautifully acted by the, I mean, and, and the musical numbers, you know, and getting Cap in the wool suit from the original Captain with the original shield fitting that in and fitting Hitler and all of that. I mean, it was just, it was so much fun. I, I, I can't remember, I mean, other than Superman the movie, I can't remember having so much fun in a superhero movie. I mean, to this day, I still watch it over and over and over again. I mean, Sebastian Stan, I'd never seen him before. I was like, who is this guy? He's fantastic. I mean, I... Joe you just got a you just got a cheer out of Rachel there, by the I, way. I just mean, so you Joe know. Johnson. I'm a sev- who, I was who was the Rocketeer <laughs> and Wolfman and, and and Jurassic Park three. Everything this guy did, I was so scared to see this movie. But somehow he went into his bag of tricks and pulled out an incredible yeah, film. It, it was everything the Rocketeer should have been. Yes, it tried to be. You know, and there were flashes of brilliance in the Rocketeer that came to fruition. In, in this film. I mean, I, I, I can't praise it more highly enough. And Hugo Weaving was spot on perfect. I mean, it, it was, you know, and having seen the original Captain America that, that, that Cannon did, <laughs> Skull there, and, and Tommy Lee Jones, I mean, his character is tough, but he was good. He was a good guy, but he had rough edges. I mean, it was just, you had it, such an incredible cast. I mean, it, to me, this is one that stands out above all the others. Wow, this is like I, your number one, number one. Yeah, I mean, this is on, you know, this is in my, you know, top, you know, maybe 25 movies. I mean, I, I absolutely wow. saga over this film. Yeah, in your top 25 movies. All right, so... I, I mean, I, Neil McDonough, too. I mean, you know, from, <laughs> you, know, I mean, you know, he's always good, but, you know, I mean, you know, from uh, at Ravenous, you know, right. which is also one of my guilty pleasures, but... I have him in it. It was just great. All right. Well, I got to hear from Steve and, and Chuck and, and Dave Campetti because Dave can't. Right, I'm going to ask you next, Dave. Uh, what what did you think of Captain America? Because you you know you you've you know you weren't around when the original Captain America. You're not that old, uh, Dave. But uh, you you definitely knew when they brought him back because he's a Golden Age hero. So you were you were aware of the resurgence of Captain America in the in the Marvel comics. How, what did you think of how they did him? I thought the uh, uh, Captain America was as close to perfect as they could get, considering it was yet another fight another super soldier, you know, bigger, better version of yourself, which seems to be their usual story told again and again and again. <laughs> With the exception of that, I thought they hit all the right notes. It was indeed a lot of, of fun. And I, I, I grant you the next one is, is a much better movie, but this one was a lot of fun. I thought it was solid, but it, it didn't it didn't impress me. Um, 
and, and pretty much for the same things. There's a lot of kind of been there, done that, seen this, seen that kind of thing for me. I thought it was solid. I thought they, they worked stuff in that I didn't expect them to work in. I gave them credit on all that. But what about you, uh, Steve? And then we'll bounce to Chuck. I think it, it, it just deserves a lot more credit than people mm. give because it's, it's – I mean, I think Downey's even said it too. Like, you know, the first Iron Man was an, a wacky experiment. But if first Avenger didn't work – This is true. If first Avenger didn't work, there would be no Avengers if, if they'd have to do something and, and, and not do that. Um, so I think Johnson, who is who was an unsung hero I right. think, in, the, in this whole situation. Now, Red Skull – not my favorite villain, you know, no. a bit, you know, and, and, and Hugo Weaving himself, and, you know, kind of distance himself as he does with every single movie he does. Um, but uh, that being said, I, I think, like, you know, Evans played it perfectly. Haley Atwell was unbelievable. Sebastian Stan was, was amazing. Um, and, Sebastian and, Stan was a real standout to yeah, me because yeah. I had never seen him before, and he was just like, wow. Yeah. You know, who is this kid? Who Like, he had an in- he had presence. He had intensity. You know, like, okay. Yeah, there's a he shot the of him factor. on the... That movie star, it factor. Yeah, he had that it factor. You yeah. like guys were M- not 14-year-old girls. girls. No, we were not. I was not a 14-year-old <laughs> I watched The Covenant when I was 14, and I remember that clear as day. And, yeah, he was on... Uh, he was on uh, Gossip uh, Girl the, yeah. and Kings. Only, I can list this Only Ian would know about The and Covenant. And the Disney only show. Uh, what was that show? All right. One, so, one time. Chuck, what's your thought on Captain America? America first Avenger. Uh, for me, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, obviously, you know, Winter Soldier is mm. the one, but um, I, you know, for me, it's I could be wrong, but for me, um, Captain America was the one Marvel movie that I felt um, really showed the interconnectivity between the characters and all. You know, you would, you started to see the relationship between. You know, Iron Man and Cap and Bucky and, you know, all of the pieces started to really... Right, because uh, Iron Man's father, forward. Tony Stark's father, was involved yeah, in the creation power, yeah. mm-hmm. of... It's all the Starks. They've done everything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, Even and in I, Game of Thrones, it was, it's the Starks. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a great origin <laughs> story, too. You know, I thought they did... Um, I thought they did it justice, unlike Iron Man, which, you know, deviated from... Um, you know the Donald Blake narrative. You know, kind of got away. You know, got way away from that. So, I, I thought they did justice. And um, I don't know exactly how the CGI made him so thin and skinny, but I, it's not for one second that I think that I was looking at CGI or anything like that. So I, I just thought it was a well done origin. It's not my favorite or anything like that, but you know, I thought it was well done. Well, I, I don't think it's real. I don't think it's anybody's favorite other than Rachel and uh, and, uh, and Ian. Ian. Yeah. Rachel and Ian. And you got you to gotta give props to Dominic Cooper, man. I mean, Absolutely. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but he played the Devil's Double. There's a movie where he plays Uday Hussein and his double. Two parts in the same movie. He's oh, absolutely man. incredible. He's also a great Mamma Mia. And Preacher? Come on, people. <laughs> oh, Mia. of course. Preacher. I, mean. <laughs> I cosplay as Preacher, so that's why it's, it's a near and dear to my heart. Yeah, and Kobe Jones <laughs> showing up and, and Armitrage. Uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Richard Armitrage, who was Thorgrim or whatever in, 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 the, uh, in The Hobbit. Oh, Thorin Odenshield. Thorin Odenshield. All right, well, we're going to move on to the next film here. To be ruled. In the end, it will be every man for himself. What do we do? We get ready. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people. So when we needed them, they could fight the battles that we never could. Gentlemen, what are you prepared to do? No offense, but I don't play well with others. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away, what are you? A uh, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. <laughs> if we 
can't protect the Earth. You can be damn sure we'll avenge it. Dr. Banner, your work is unparalleled, and I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. Thanks. Now, here's what's interesting. Uh, this this film only made the top of the list for uh, one of our people here, and, and I won't say who that is. But I, I do want to, I'm, I'm going to start with you this time, Steve. What did you think of Avengers? Because I know you're an Avengers fan. It didn't make your top five, but you're an Avengers fan. Now, for me, I'm just going to say I thought it was good. I thought it was, it was, you know, they picked the right guy, you know, to do this. He's clearly got the cachet. He understands giving multiple characters, multiple arcs. And, and they really kind of did what uh, he, he did. It was the best since what Brian had done with the X-Men, where we have multiple storylines. And I really thought he did it best in X-Men 2, where it really kind of came together. X-Men and, 2. And X-Men 2, I think, is still, you have to give credit mm-hmm. to X-Men 2 to show how to make a team movie work. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, it's whatever props I'll give to uh, Avengers. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the aside, the aside that the opening ten minutes, the opening ten minutes of of X Men Two is possibly the some of the best superhero stuff ever. Absolutely. The, the scene in the White House. Absolutely. But but getting back to Avengers, I mean, yeah. the the it, it was so bold. I mean, it, you know, it was so bold. You know, bringing everybody together, having this plan, having the. You know, bringing Loki back and and some you know some of the you know the reason we still talk about Loki is is the the amazing stuff that Hiddleston was doing in this movie. I mean, right. he, you know, he he was unbelievable, really well written. Did you ever hear how he he auditioned for Thor? Yeah, you see it. You see the gist yes, of him doing it. It's great. Sort of like what was yeah. he thinking? I'm sorry, guys. No, it's uh, have you it, seen that, Rachel? Um. I've heard the story. Oh, my there's goodness. a gif of him holding up the oh, yeah. holding up the thing. Yeah, yeah. and he's yeah. Little, he tried to get big, but he's a little little, little. Shakespearean. Tom yeah, Hiddleston. yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think um, again, this is one of those embarrassment or riches thing. I, I think that it's uh, for the for the time, this was uh, you know, in, uh, in my opinion, like an unbelievable movie. I think by comparison to Infinity War, the Battle of New York looks kind of like there really was no danger to anybody compared to <laughs> infinity war which i'll talk about later but um you know it, it's it's one of those things where it was super solid for the time and uh, i think now just because other stuff came just because winter soldier came and, and and infinity war came it's it's a little less but that being said if it's on cable i'm watching it usually anyway you know all right well i won't get to the the, uh, the person who 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 said it was on their top uh list but i want to go to you chuck chuck what were your thoughts on avengers did you feel it worked did you love it did you it's not on your list but uh, what do you think yeah i i loved i loved avengers i mean i think uh someone mentioned it you know that for that period of time it was what it was i mean it was epic for that moment and then, you know, other movies came and surpassed it, and I think that's the way it should be. But, I mean, again, going back to my childhood as a, as a young man, as a, you know, comic nerd, a lifelong comic nerd. I mean, ooh, it was ooh, wait, wait, did you say chronic nerd? I like that. That's good. I'm using chronic. I did not say that. Chronic. Like, yeah, chron- I thought you said chronic nerd. I'm like chronic nerd. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, cool. that's a good title. I, right like, I like that a lot. <laughs> the, chronic, <laughs> the chronic nerd. I'll take credit for it. All right. But, you know, <laughs> I'm like a nerd. I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely the culmination of almost everything that I had, um, you know, wanted to see, you know, growing up. Um, again, going back to the Hulk, I know this is, sounds like I'm some kind of Hulk freak, but uh, it, 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 he was well represented. You come out of the closet now, Chuck. I know you're a Hulk freak. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, isn't that the... Um, is it, it was Avengers where they changed the dynamic where he said, I'm always angry. Is that correct? Am I correct? Yes. It was. It was. Yes. And that, uh, that, that scared me, though. I will admit, that part scared me because it changed the fundamental um, premise of the of the, the Incredible Hulk. Well, you know, you know so, I, it's funny because I, I got that, what I got from that was that, you know, understanding how much of the Hulk, you know, the the other thing is, you know, one of the reasons and we'll get to it when we talk about Spider-Man Homecoming is, you know, the, the once you know the mythos, you know, his yeah. frustration is 
this is the way he has to live that he has this thing inside him so uh the yeah. all, i'm always angry i got that to be more of that was like as much character development as we could get out of him in that movie you know what i mean that was my yeah take. that was my take that's true. but what a line though yeah. no it's a great, it's, a a great it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's definitely a great line, great line. It, and the, the, the other thing you mentioned that i think is important too is is at that time it was pretty it was a pretty bold yeah. you know it you know, wow, it worked. Yeah. So yeah, it, to, 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 to be, it, it, it has been surpassed. I agree with you, but I think at the time it was huge. I thought it was, I always thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great. Yeah. They, we hadn't yet, I thought Iron Man was great, and I didn't think we had passed Iron Man yet for me of any of these superhero movies. But I want to know now what you, Ian, and you, Dave Campetti, thought. So, so I'll start with you, Ian. What did you think of Avengers? Well, first off, it had Jenny a gutter in it. So, that's from my true. point of view, it's that's great. You, you true. know, that's true. I mean, that was a great scene, too. She's years old, and she still looks amazing. So, that was one thing. <laughs> but, I thought what was brilliant about this movie was that it, you know, the special effects at the end were a little, a little undercooked for the battle scenes. You're absolutely right. So, that kind of pushes it to just a good level for me. But, taking Captain America... And taking, keep, not, not doing what DC did with Man of Steel, where you took the character who's the Boy Scout and put him in with all these other people, Tony Stark and all that, and kept him as the Boy Scout and allowed him to be square in a lot of ways. Made that movie because it created the dynamic between the characters. This movie to me is like that episode in a TV series that sets up the season finale. You know, yes, yes. Well, I mean, I think that's why they chose the writer director. They did. He understood that. He understood right. po point counterpoint. Like you put these two characters in a room, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. That's you know? exactly it. You saw the friendships develop, the sides that basically came to fruition or broke apart in Civil War. So you see how it all starts here, and the and the brilliance. Now, if you getting the, the Blu-rays, you'd have all these little vignettes with um, Phil. Bill Coulson, mm -hmm. that he just is this great, nice guy that you really, really like. And seeing Gwyneth Paltrow and trying them to be friends, and then to have him kill, it, and that it affected all of them because he had helped every single one of them. And to create that moment that his death is what brings them all together, I thought was brilliant because I didn't, and it gave a gravitas to the situation that Loki was a serious, because he had already lost one. You know, in, in Thor, to bring a character that lost back and now give him this gravitas of killing, you know, Coulson, character that we've loved through all these movies, is, is something that I thought was brilliant. And maybe the battle at the end didn't live up to all the hype, but it, it, it solidified these characters for all the movies going forward. And in that sense, this was not only a good movie, but it was a necessary movie. If this went bad, you couldn't do all the other films. No, well, I, can't, I can't really disagree with that. Dave uh, Campetti, any, any thoughts from you on the Avengers? Because like you, you know, this was you your top. This is your top of the list. Hey, when you have me go after that guy, I have nothing <laughs> left to say because he gets all the right points exactly the right way. I just want to sit back and listen to him. But uh, uh, let's let's just say this. Uh, you know, I'm I'm older than most all of the people in this group. So, so uh, you know, I I grew yes. up with yes, master. His, yeah, <laughs> I grew up seeing Adam West's crappy Batman movie in the theaters. You know, I I, I lived through, as I said earlier, you know, Reb Brown's Captain America and and, <laughs> and, and and stuff like that. So to go into a movie and see these characters done that well on the big screen, and everybody is enjoying it. There were literally tears in my eyes. I couldn't believe I'd lived long enough to see these characters living and breathing on the screen and it being treated that well, that respectfully, without being overly serious and certainly not making fun of the characters. So uh, the, the, this yeah. was like the, the holy grail here for a, a, a long-lived comics fan that wanted to see the Avengers on the screen, and it's done right. 
you know, I, uh, I agree 100 percent right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. my, my quibbles with with the movie, you know, it's, it's in my it's in my top five, but it's not my top one of my top five. Uh, the only reason being the the, the 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 crap Hollywood ending where you blow up the main thing and then uh, all the aliens power down and die. It's like what? Uh, they powered down and died. I thought they were aliens, not <laughs> robots. And yeah. oh, by the way. If your main computer dies, does your iPhone, does your iPad, does your everything else automatically power down? No. Well, I was Which looking for Jeff Goldblum in the laptop. <laughs> I was looking right. for Jeff Goldblum in the laptop. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, 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 so, so, yeah, so that kind of crap Hollywood ending so that they, you know, you can get, get through your denouement in the last five minutes and, and, and go for shawarma. Uh, is uh, <laughs> that bothered me, but very little compared to how wonderfully I thought it was that the Avengers were there on the screen, all done so well. And incidentally, I thought that was the last time that the CGI on the Hulk looked really good. Wow, I think okay. since then it's gotten worse, not better. And it did have, look- to me, it had the best line. Uh, my favorite line was uh, Puny God. <laughs> you puny <laughs> God. Loki. Yep. <laughs> yes, I love it. Well, that, that was that was how the Hulk talk. Well, all right, we're going to jump now. Pretty much, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies. That was the end of Phase One. The Avengers was the end of Phase One. Yes. And so then we're going into Phase Two, and we're going to we're going to jump through Phase Two in the last NASA half. We're going to compress time now. We only have a half hour left, so we're going to we're going to run through. And I do want to say that uh, I thought that Iron Man Three was far superior. To Iron Man 2. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it was interesting because it was, and, and I'm, here's what I'm going to play to you. Uh, I played this because back when it came, I was going to originally come in here, you know, we, we've all had so much to say, but I was going to play the original, um, uh, oh, all right, so I'm not going to play it at all, actually. All right, I was going to play, I had, I had the original interviews from the Junkets, I was going to play mm-hmm. a, a soundbite, but uh, Iron Man 3 uh, was the return of Shane Black. Right. Now, uh, you may not know who Shane Black was. Shane Black created the Lethal Weapon franchise. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know. All right, so you know. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just, you know. I just I know. nodded. And I realized starred, I wanted to. And right. starred in Predator. And he starred yeah, in Predator. He starred as an actor. He did, you know, he did a, a, a lot of, some big budget movies that were pretty forgettable, Last Boy Scout and stuff like that. But he, he was someone who, for a bunch of years, similar to Downey, mm-hmm. so bringing the irony of Hollywood here uh, into the Hollywood universe, is that uh, he's someone who drugs had kind of derailed his career for a while. He did mm-hmm. a bunch of nothing. But then he did, uh, as we all mentioned, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, my God. I and which I, which I love, which was, you know, Val Kilmer sure. and uh, Robert Downey Jr. You know, yeah. so you got Batman and Iron Man in the same movie. <laughs> uh, so, uh, puppy, so puppy yeah. exactly. and the Saint. Yeah, pu- well, he was a puppy. Yeah, the Saint. <laughs> yeah, the Saint too. Puffy, Puffy Kilmer. Uh, he's the new Puff Daddy. <laughs> Puff Kilmer. Anyway, so uh, so he did this movie, and and it was a lot of fun. But he was kind of getting his mojo back, and he was definitely, without getting into, he was the the typical you know eighties nineties Hollywood excess had burned him out, whatnot. But he was still a great writer. And he still had a lot of stuff he wanted to say. So I believe it was Downey that got him the gig for Iron Man 3. And I thought he did a great job. Yeah. To, so. to me, yeah. If, I, if I could jump in. To me, the Iron Man 3 is, is sort of, I always consider it the, the when the Marvel movies kind of grew up. I mean, be, yes. be, between yes. be, between that and, and, and Winter Soldier, which we'll talk about. But but that, that. I mean, they they got Drew Pierce, uh, who was a who worked on a show called No Heroics that mm-hmm. you can't get. You can only get it online. It's a British show, but it was basically about a bunch of about a bunch of, of superheroes, some of whom had really kind of lousy uh, lousy powers and stuff. But it really kind of kind of as they would say, took the piss out of the superhero genre. And Feige hired him to help <laughs> with with Shane Black, who is mm-hmm. one of the most sarcastic guys in the world. We're not going to talk about the Predator. But, like, you know, like, the, the, you know, and, and, and that was just a tour de force between those two guys and Downey, you know, ad-libbing and doing all sorts of crazy it's, it's stuff. All, it's in your top five. It's, it's, it's well, yeah, it's one of my, it is in my what top it, five. For, now, absolutely. now, what about you, Rachel? Um, I love Iron Man 3, but I love Iron Man 3 for very specific reasons. Like we were talking mm. earlier about, like, I love Adam pa- Adam Pally's cameo in this. Because if you know the story of how Adam Pally got cast, it was because um, Downey just, like, texted him and was like, do you want to be in this movie? So, like, Adam Pally just got in a Marvel movie because he knows Downey. 
And so then, like, his role is just. I knew Downey, I'd be in a Marvel movie too. Yeah, but it was like super fan. Like, it's like the craziest role. He has like a goatee to look like him, and I just want that character to come back. So bad, <laughs> Gary. Yeah, That's Gary great. the uh, Gary the local news guy. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, he he was doing some kind of web series. Downey hired him to do a web series, and Pally, who you know, if you guys know from uh, the stuff that he has happy done, happy endings, happy endings and stuff. Um, he, you know, he showed up to Downey's house, and Downey was talking about you know wanting to do this web series, and Pally was like. Why the hell are you doing a web series? You're Robert Downey Jr. Like, what, like he was so real with him that Downey like got him for the <laughs> got him for the thing because like he told him too was funny. Like, yeah, exactly. that's too funny. All right, well there it is. I I, I really enjoyed it. Now uh, let me hear from Chuck and uh, Dave and Ian. What did you all think? Th- what did the three of you, uh, starting with you, Chuck? What did you think of Iron Man three? Uh, yeah, you know I liked Iron Man three, but I, I definitely had to adjust my. Uh, my uh, my mental palette to uh, fit what the vision was. It, it wasn't a typical uh, Iron Man movie or superhero movie in my brain, for that matter. But I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite. I, I will admit, and quite frankly, it almost made my uh, my least favorite list. But wow, it, it was wow, okay. Well, you know, yeah. it's it's funny that you say that because. I felt it was it was an angry film. I felt that you know Shane Black has has got a lot of anger about a lot of stuff, and it comes out a lot in his movies. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought yeah. this was a yeah. typical. I'm, I'm gonna go back and watch. A, you know, Shane watch Black's last name is fitting for him. And if if I could just say, yeah. if you haven't seen All Hail the King, which was mm-hmm. the short, the uh, the Blu-ray short uh, that shows what happens to Mandarin, what happens to. Trevor Slattery oh my after God, yes. in prison. <laughs> see it, yeah, see it, and and Rockwell comes oh. back in it as, as as you know Justin Hammer. It's it's an unbelievable. It's Drew brilliant. Drew Pierce wrote it and and directed it uh, as well, and so it's a fantastic companion piece. It really should have been the post credit. Would have been great. It if should it was have been post credits. Uh, and um, Dave Campetti. Well, you know me. <laughs> I look at plot holes. <laughs> uh, no, I. While I was watching it, I was questioning, why is he going through all this, dealing with the Mandarin, and not calling S.H.I.E.L.D., not calling any of the Avengers? They've already established this whole universe, and he's not calling for help for anybody? That, that, that troubled me. Mm. And then uh, uh, it also bothered me that they didn't even touch on what came later in Winter Soldier when... Uh, um, you know, Shield was uh, revealed to be half Hydra. Didn't Tony Stark already know that? He bugged the Shield's uh, uh, helicarrier and and uh, cribbed all their data. Remember that scene in Avengers? Yeah, in Avengers. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I so, do. Yes. So why didn't he at any point deal with the Hydra threat? Why didn't he? If he didn't know about it, why didn't he call Shield? So well, that's I think the kind uh, of Rachel has the answer. Rachel. What? <laughs> what about Shield? So, uh, yeah, no, I, I can't disagree with you, Dave. Uh, there were definitely were some plot holes in, in three. I enjoyed it. It was a visceral thing. I thought it was bold. It took some challenges. You know, destroying Tony's house was like, oh, I wanted to live in that house. You know, <laughs> so there, there were some things that, that I really did enjoy. Uh, you know, I like what they did with Rowdy. Uh, is it Rowdy? Rowdy. 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 Rowdy sorry. Uh, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to get my Rowdy, <laughs> Rowdy, Roddy, pa- Piper. Anyway. James uh, Rowdy. So I, 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 there were things I liked about it. I thought it was definitely better than the second one. I thought the second one, you know, had issues like, like Downey used to have. And, but um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was great, but, I, but I, I definitely, definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed what. Uh, Shane Black was doing. Now, moving ahead and following it, the the list of of where uh, the Marvel scene. I mean, what's what? What are you gonna say? I was gonna say that you know, boy, the producer of Michael's film hang, uh, hooked up. I worked for the producer of Boys. Boys worked with Ditto and Robert Downey on a guide to recognizing your saints. And if you don't remember the movies at that time, there were a lot of big budget superhero movies, or not superhero, but big budget adventure movies that barely didn't deal with characterization. It was all just special effects. Mm. And Robert Downey had a conversation with Boyce about why can't movies have deep characterizations. And I think the PTSD angle of a superhero going through PTSD was brilliant. I thought that we had never touched on anything like that, a superhero having fears and scared to fight because of something that happened, I thought was revolutionary in a way. And, And the twist 
of Ben Kingsley. Because again, like you've all said, this this you know megalomaniacal character. But when he turned to the actor, I mean, I didn't see that coming. And as a screenwriter and producer, I didn't see the twist. I never saw that. So I mean, admittedly, it had plot holes, which is why it's not on my top five. But I thought it, it really broke some new ground and was different than a lot of the Marvel movies. All right, I, I can't disagree with that. Well, we're gonna we're condense the next four together uh, because the next four is Thor: The Dark World. Captain America the Winter Soldier, which is my absolute favorite of all time. Mine love too, it. Mine love too, it. Mine too. Best, 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 best. Uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers Age of Ultron, which clearly is the lowest on the list for, for everybody. But um, I, I will say this. I'm going to give my quick reviews on these four, and then you can tell me uh, that your reviews on those, those four. Uh, I'll start with the lady in the room here. But um, Dar- Thor Dark World. I thought Thor Dark World was okay. I thought it, I thought it was not as good as the first film, uh, honestly. I thought it was a little jumpy. Jumbled, you know, it wasn't X Men Two, X Men Three jumbled, but I, th- I thought it was a little jumbled. Uh, um, you know, they they they're showing giving characters credit, and I, and I think at that point, you know, it was beginning to be obviously these movies are making a lot of money, and you know they're all white males, and we need to see something. Mm-hmm. So they start, you know, kind of mixing up some of the characters. So so that was okay. I, I was with that, uh, but for me, Captain America: Winter Soldier. That was Marvel hitting its stride. Yeah. The, 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 what I love, I love so many things about it. I love the fact that we had entered the era where you, it doesn't matter how big you are as an actor, you'll do a comic book movie. Right. Okay? Like, you can get Robert Redford, you can get anybody. You can get anybody. Okay? So anybody is going to be in a comic book movie there. There's nothing, anything diminishing about being in them anymore. So they've become, in my opinion, a legitimate form of art. Okay. Two, I love the fact that they were taking, again, you know, what fits, you know, I teach this filmmaking class. And one of the things I tell the students is, you know, it's important to understand genre because you can have a story, but what's the best genre to tell this story in? And Captain America, The Winter Soldier is a spy movie. Mm-hmm. And it's great as a spy movie, yeah. and that's what to me that's what made it work co- completely. And but, what better to get for a spy movie than the star of Three Days of, of yeah, the exactly, Conflict. exactly. That's yeah. that's that's what was the brilliant part about it. So so there's so many great things about Captain America: Winter Soldier. I loved. I love everything with Bucky. I love what they did with him because I had no idea. You know, again, Stan. You know, of course, Rachel. You know, <laughs> being the Uber fan, she's like, of course, he, of she's course, literally he's literally wearing, wearing a, a Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier shirt. shirt. <laughs> she's wearing a Winter Soldier shirt. Everyone, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. She's wearing Bucky Barnes on herself right now. A shirtless, um, a shirtless Bucky Barnes. I will she's wearing, talk about that scene because that scene makes wearing, no sense she's to wearing, me. She, first of all, she's wearing a shirtless Bucky Barnes, <laughs> and she's naked under her clothes, just so you know. All right. Yeah, that's how it that's, looks. That's more of a, a, a side a in-joke for Ian. But um, then then uh, we talk. i got to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy was a revelation. It was a revelation because it was it took everything Marvel was doing, not only spin it on its ear, but it's it's just balls out. It's funny. It's irreverent. It's it's funky. It's different, and and it has one of the best scores you could ever possibly put in a movie. That it just it's everything. Everything about that movie worked, uh, and 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 you're just surprised. Like you get big name actors doing you know little voiceovers for CGI characters. There's just so many things about it that worked, and I liked that they are smart enough to know the comics. The comic movies have to evolve, and I and I like that that Marvel knows that no matter how successful it is, you know we can witness James Bond. The the peaks and valleys in James Bond is because every time you know they they Bond has the what they call the the purge, and, and then the, the the you know it gets too you know high tech and you know and then they purge and they get rid of everything they strip away all the artifice and then then it gets all hyped up again but by the time it gets hyped up again like the last bond movie eh, you've seen it all before it's boring yeah. so same thing i thought here that they they knew that marvel movies have to innovate so what were we going to say two two things one one you know winter soldier i mean we already said uh, much was already said how yes. amazing it is to me the russo brothers they were sitcom guys man yes. and i still i yes. asked I, I have asked filmmakers after filmmaker after filmmaker, how the hell you go from Arrested Development to uh, Winter Soldier or, or Community to Winter Soldier, which, which they did. 
But the, the, the great thing is all the stuff that happened in, in Winter Soldier was so dark and S.H.I.E.L.D. got flipped over and everything. And then to have the, the genius of going into Guardians of the Galaxy as the palate cleanser. You get galaxies away from where we're talking about. You let everybody reset and recharge with uh, what's going on in the Marvel Universe. And, and again, and I remember saying, if they can make Guardians a hit, for the bunch of characters, they can do anything. They right? can do anything, and I said the same thing for Ant Man too. I'm like, if they can make Ant Man a hit, they can do anything. And 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 honestly, like they've proven me <laughs> right every time. All right, well, Rachel, tell me tell me your thoughts on Phase Two because that's basically what we're talking about. Okay, the highlights. I don't want to talk about Thor: Dark World because whatever, it's fine. Yeah. So there, that's that. It's that's fine. That. Um, but Winter so Soldier. Winter Soldier, I. I'm wearing the shirtless Bucky Barnes shirt because I don't. It doesn't make any sense to me that he is shirtless in this chair, heavy breathing. That's one of my like, who is this scene for? Because it's like, why he could wear a tank top? He did it in Civil War. Like you're just, you want me to see Sebastian's hand without a shirt on? That's what that scene's for. Well, they're, they're obviously writing for Rachel Eichmann. They go, mm, yeah. oh, well, you know what? In this scene, because you know Rachel's gonna be watching. <laughs> they're like Rachel Eichmann's here. She has to watch it. Like no, but it's like. Those scenes are, I was like, that is one of those where I'm like, this is for all, everyone attracted to men because there's no reason he doesn't have a shirt on. But I love that elevator scene. Like, oh, the God, fights so in sure. Winter Soldier are the best out of any movie. It's not my favorite cap, but it is one of, like, the most, like, well thought out, crazy mm-hmm. twist storyline that I, Marvel hasn't topped it yet, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy introduced my other favorite Marvel hero because I love Rocket Raccoon so much <laughs> that, like, we'll talk about it, but that scene in Infinity War when Bucky and Rocket are using, they're my favorite weapons. So I screamed in, like, a theater and no one else cared but me. But, like, that's why I like Guardians so much. It's like, I'm a Parks and Rec fan, so, like, Chris Pratt getting buff, like, ruined my life. But <laughs> the I love Rocket Raccoon. I love Groot. I cried a lot when I watched that movie. Glenn Close showed up, so there's my second member of the Big Chill movies uh, or movie. Um, and then, uh, okay, I have a lot to say about Ultron because I didn't get to talk during the Avenger movie. And my problem is Joss Whedon with both of them because Joss Whedon has three female characters that he writes and then champions himself as a feminist writer, and yeah. it bothers me. And so. This in Age of Ultron, he's like, oh, Scarlet, or, uh, well, Scarlet Johansson, but oh, uh, I'm a monster because I can't have kids. And okay, Natasha. And like, uh, the Bruce Banner storyline with her, which is, has no comic backing, makes me furious. And then it did give me Wanda Maximoff, but they couldn't say they were Magneto's kids, so they have a weird background. There's a lot I have a problem with Age of Ultron, and it took me three tries to watch that movie and i still think i've i've not seen scenes well I don't it, care. it made almost everybody here's worst so, <laughs> I, so i honestly I can, forgot about it and if i could redo it i would put that at the end you put that at the end you <laughs> forgot about it all right so uh running any uh i'm going to ask you now chuck running through uh those four or five films of phase two any any highlights anything you want to say well, I, I thought i, I enjoyed phase two uh for the most part i I will say um of those movies uh thor um dark world and i'd say crazy enough age of ultron was like it i i liked it you know he loved it's on his list age of ultron not on my no it's not on your list no i'm sorry i'm sorry it's not on your list i apologize no no. yeah you liked it though yeah i liked it but soon soon shortly thereafter it wore thin Mm. But um, but Ant Man was definitely the surprise of all those movies. That was the uh, that was the like the liver shot where you the one you weren't expecting. You know, I mean, I, I the liver shot. No you mind. <laughs> well, in boxing, I'm a boxing fan too. You know, okay. that's the the punch you uh, that drops you that you don't expect to drop you. But um, but yeah, man. I mean, I I, I enjoyed uh, Ant Man a lot. You know, it was really. Ant Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Neither one of those I, I really had any comic frame of reference growing up or anything. I didn't look up to them. I didn't dress up like them. I didn't try to be them. Oh come on, I Chuck! Thought, I know you dressed up like Rocket Raccoon. Come on. 
<laughs> How yeah. much? Yeah. Dude, where are the photos? We get the I photos. I dressed up like Paul Rudd surprise abs, <laughs> <laughs> but no one knew he had. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, but so you you did like it. You you so for the most part you were with Phase Two. Yeah, yeah, I, I was with Phase Two for the most part. Yeah, I, I would say so. Okay. And, I, and I, I thought it was dope, you know, that they really took risks, I think. I think it's fair to say, you know, they took some risks in Phase Two, and they expanded the universe, so to speak, um, beyond, uh, you know, the typical the typical guys like Captain America, and, um, and gave the, um, you know, expanded the universe into um, to the masses, you know, um, again, some some things, you know, Batman, Superman, not you know, not just any other groups or anything. You know, they're just their go to, and it's similar True. with some of the, uh, you know, some of the Marvel characters as well. But nobody right. really expected some of those uh, movies to be made. This is true. Now, Dave and uh, Ian, uh, any any last thoughts on Phase Two before we jump into Phase Three in our last ten minutes here? Yeah, I, I think Guardians. Oh, go ahead, you go first. All right. Uh, I thought Phase 2, they had finally figured out how to do Marvel movies without being tentative about anything. Mm. So, you know, you, you see the other ones and you see where uh, we were talking about some of the lower budget elements and some of the things that didn't quite work and whatever. And the stuff that didn't work in Phase 2, at least they were trying uh, other things. They were trying to expand. Guardians of the Galaxy was amazing. And uh, so, you, you know, I, I came out of Guardians of the Galaxy saying, you know, for, for Marvel fans, this is the way we felt as kids when we saw the first Star Wars. Right. Absolutely. That's absolutely and, yeah. And, 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 you know, it was also Marvel was, was proving they could do anything at that point. So while DC yeah. was still saying, well, you know, uh, we don't really want to do a Wonder Woman movie yet because people aren't going to believe a female superhero. Right. Marvel's oh. over here saying, and here's our talking raccoon. Right. And, <laughs> exactly. And, and, Women and, can come later. Exactly. Here's a talking raccoon. Exactly. Women are exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I think that, that, that was the big thing there. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right, and uh, Ian, anything you want to say about Phase 2? Well, I thought that for the Dark World, I mean, having Loki die and there was the other realms and setting up Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. I didn't fall asleep, but I didn't. It wasn't like one I'm going to watch over and over again. Gotcha. Gotcha. But Winter Soldier, you know, I mean, a spy movie. It, it, they were changing, you know, surprising. And Jenny and Gutter had a fight scene in a miniskirt. So <laughs> I mean, you know, that's like my fight you know, scene in a miniskirt. The end stuff. Drops the mic. Right. I mean, that's all it's Drops the I mean, mic. Gotta, that's it. Drop the mic. That's it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Guardians, just like, like we said, it's Star Wars. I mean, for that first scene where he starts dancing, I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> you agree. Special effects. When they went inside the head. I, yes. You know, nowhere. I mean, it was just, and, and the characters and the, the jokes. I mean, I was laughing and screaming and cheering in a movie like I hadn't done in so long. And all of a sudden, I was like, sitting there going, yes, this is what it was like to be, you know, going to the movies in the 70s and 80s. You know, this is what it was. You know, you were still making great films. You just, you know, you were roaring through them. Like, you know, even in Superman 2, the fight scenes in Superman 2, when he, you know, just scared to step outside, General, it had that kind of, you know, fun to it. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, what was the last one is Age of Ultron, which was like a bad Star Trek episode with a lot of text and babble, but I didn't understand what the hell was going on. Right, you know, and I was like, it was like a billion robots that I, I kept I kept thinking, like, you know, well, where's all Schwarzenegger? Put the skin on him. I, I, I didn't know. And it was the same story. Okay. Make it... Yeah. Make it an AI, and they're going to hate humans and want to destroy humans because we infest the planet with the same thing again. Weird stuff. With we the infest planet. the planet with a bigger, better version of ourselves. Right, and you had you know the tw the twins, and you know, and after seeing uh, you know a few days of future past, you see uh, Quicksilver in that movie, and it's so great. And then you and then Ultron, he's like, eh, you know, and and I was like, I kept looking at the guy, and I'm like. 
I know this guy, and I'm like, wait a second, that's kick ass. Yeah, exactly. Why is exactly. Kick-ass? <laughs> exactly. Why is kick ass running fast? All right, so yeah, right. now I'm with you. I'm with you. Why is kick ass running fast? That's my quote. Right. Right. I'm sorry, WBA. All right, so. Uh, Spader was good. You know, Spader, you know, Spader was good. He did, he did the Spader, you know. Well, he, he's, listen, Spader is always good. I, I give it to him. He's getting fat and bald. He's still good. But all right, so we, we move past. Now we're into phase three, and we're going to just talk about the highlights there. Clearly, I, I think. The, the two things, three things I'll mention. That Guardians of the Galaxy uh, at the end of Phase 2 was really announcing what Marvel did coming into the 90s, which was really get more intergalactic, you know. And this is a, the, clearly the precursor where we're going, having a villain like Thanos. Where, where It's not just a threat to the Earth, it's a threat to the universe that we're dealing with. So, you know, I have to, to the galaxy, <laughs> but at the same time, the galaxy, I'm sorry, the galaxy. And, and so, you know, I have to assume, you know, they're going to have to find a way to both scale it back, but then, you know, make it even bigger going, going ahead. So may, we're going to maybe deal with the multiverse because I know micronauts are coming or something. Mm-hmm. But I'll say all that to say that I, I thought that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was just about as good as Galaxy 1, and I thought that Spider-Man Homecoming was like the Spider-Man movie we've all been waiting for. You know, I thought what was great about it was they were able to take what this universe is and bring it on a scale and literally make him a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and he's really a teenager, and what would it be like if you were a teenager and you got powers? So, And I thought that that was something we never really quite got with all the other incarnations, and I thought that uh, Thor... Ragnarok was just pure fun, just pure like pure fun. Black Panther, you know, Black Panther I think ushers in a new uh, level of, of not just superhero movies, but superhero movies to me have always been science fiction, and what science fiction can do at its best, you know, like like a good comedy is say something about the human condition. And what made Black Panther, I don't necessarily think it's the best Marvel movie. Uh, uh, you know, but it is so much more than every other Marvel movie because while, like Dave said, part of the, the weakness of the Marvel movie, it's good against bad, it's a galactic villain, you know, it's fun, you like the character, but they're not really about anything. But to put forward the concept, the science fiction, the atrofuturist concept, like what if there was a place where people of color had not been colonized? That's just pure science fiction. And to even suggest it takes things to a whole other level. So I liked it, and I loved it on that level. I love the fact that they're smart enough, just like they did with Captain Marvel, uh, and 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 like they did with Thor. You're like, okay, this is Shakespearean. Okay, this is a woman's story. Okay, this is a story about people of color. They're giving the creators who would tell these stories best the opportunity to tell these stories. To me, I think that that's great. So that's my two cents. Uh, Rachel, any thoughts on Phase Three? Here? Phase Three is my favorite. Um, you didn't really talk about Civil War, but I love Civil War, even though people think it's a mess. I I don't know. I love Civil War. I think it's really fun. I ship Steve and Tony. So I, or not, yeah, Steve and Tony. I said it right. Steve and Tony. Yeah, so I like it. Um, no, uh, I love Phase 3 the best. I think it's the best movies. I'll rewatch them. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has that weird brandy scene that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> and then where uh, Yondu says that he's his daddy. There's like a couple of things that I'm always like, in the uh, phase three, but I love that it took Marvel a really long time, but it's finally getting their female characters right in phase three. And that's like with Shuri, who has the best line of all of Marvel, where she calls Martin Freeman a colonizer, um, Taika. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many parts of phase three that are just incredible. And Infinity War gives the best line, which is um, they, for me, being a comic fan, you get gate kept a lot. So to see all these women fighting at the end and Natasha's like, she isn't alone. I was like, this is great. Like, I'm having the time of my life right now. And like. This, are, you ta- are you talking about Black Panther? No, at the end of Infinity War, oh, when Infinity Natasha War. Okay, is like, yes, she's yes, not yes. alone. But it's like little details in the third phase that I was like. They got a woman on in Marvel to be like, this happens, do this. Because, like, my favorite thing about Wanda is she has chipped nails in Civil War, which I was like, that's great. You don't see that because men make movies and women don't, and we have chipped nails all the time. And I just, I, uh, 
I could talk about Phase Three like forever. I love Phase Three. Okay, Steve. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Guardians Two is uh, is you know James Gunn's uh, uh, thank you letter. Uh, it's basically like you know him his victory lap. He could do whatever he wanted, right. did whatever right. he wanted. Right. Uh, the flying arrow scene, the escape from uh, Yondo's escape. Yes. Unbelievable. I great, mean, just great, just great just, scene. just fantastic. Um, Infinity War. What can you say? I mean, Infinity War is unbelievable. Black Panther. Uh, to sum it up quickly, Black, Black Panther. I loved the stuff in the in the real world. I loved the Wakanda stuff. I thought the end scene, with the end fight, was a little too CG for two great actors. Uh, I agree with you a thousand uh, percent on um, that. I agree yeah, with you. I, mean, and, I thought I thought the the end fight paled in comparison to the mano a mano scene. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, after that it scene, paled, it paled. It paled. Yeah. To the uh, with the soldier end fight, which was really personal. Yes. Oh, sure. sure. Yes. And, and and yeah, and, and and probably just as much as much CG in Winter Soldier, but somehow it. Looked, it, it looked just better. Looked better. Well, it was darker. It was darker. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Chuck, I got to get your thoughts on Phase Three. What's your What are your thoughts there? Uh, yeah, I, I for the most part enjoyed uh, Phase Three. Um, it did not like Guardians of the Galaxy at all, though. So I, you know, again, hearing you compare it to the first one, saying it's on par with it. Makes mm. me actually want to watch it again. Just mm. to okay, I, I thought he was going to say, makes me want to erase your number from my phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not not quite. No, not yet, I not yet. That we we didn't talk about every film. But uh, yeah, but obviously Black Panther was a movement, um, and that you know that speaks for itself. Um, Thor Ragnarok was, I thought it was the best of all the Thor movies personally. Fantastic, um, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though. Um, yeah, and back to the Hulk. It was yeah, a little, a little too funny for me, a little too cute. Mm. But um, but but I I have to admit it was well done. It was well done, and um, I, I have to give them a. A major salute for that. Taika, right. Taika, 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 Taika. All right, well, we're just oh, about Taika. out of time, but I do want to say a couple quick things. One, uh, that you can follow uh, Night Shift on Facebook at Night Shift, N-I-T-E-S-H-I-F-T. Uh, I want to have everybody here give out their social media, except for Steve, of course. Uh, Rachel, what's your social media here? Where can people follow you? Um, you can follow me at Rachel Leishman on Twitter. And How do you spell Ra- Leishman? L-E-I-S-H-M-A-N. Mm. And it's Rachel underscore Leishman on Instagram because someone won't give me their hand. Mm. And Ian, how about you? Well, you can find me on uh, Facebook. I think I'm Ian Two, Ian Holt Two. Uh, but you'll see my page at the listing of my uh, films. And I'm at Ian Holt Writer on Twitter. Okay. And Dave Campetti. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as David Campetti. That's C A M P I T I. I'm the only David Campetti on the planet, believe mm, it or not. So I'm not right. hard to find. That there it is. Um, I have a blog at davidcampetti.com and my company website, glasshousegraphics.com. You see a lot of great art there. Steve? Uh, yeah, NYC Nerd News, at NYC Nerd News NYC, on Twitter. All right, there you go. And what about you, Chuck? Uh, you can find me at Chuck Creekmer, C-R-E-E-K-M-U-R, at Chuck Creekmer, all across the uh, internet. All across and, uh, the internet. And allhiphop.com is the website. All right, and uh, you can follow me on instagram and twitter at mike on screen so until next week this has been night shift uh any any last thoughts on on anybody are you all excited about endgame i'm yeah. gonna I can't cry wait. you're gonna cry mm-hmm. what about I you can't wait. what about you dave i bought my tickets for sunday morning mm, and and you chuck yeah i'm i'm i've got i've got tickets in two different cities I'm, i'll probably cancel one Right. I can't commit to both, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all good, and I'm going to see it again probably Monday by myself. All right. Until next time, yeah. this has been Night Shift. Thank you. <laughs>